Ready? Yeah. The smell of a book is the smell of its death. It mingles promise and loss. It's up there, classics, then science books, um, like uh, more poetry, history. Everything is organized, and that those are my sister's uh, romance uh, collection. You know, so everything is sort of organized according to a principle, and you. You, know, you fit your little sculpture here, your this there, and then suddenly the books keep coming and coming and coming, and you know I feel so sad that the graphic novels can't be spine facing. Okay, have you read this that you can't scratch? You must read it. Then my these are my Alan Moore's, which are like little secret hidden. <laughs> my parents met in a bookshop. Met in bookshops. They dated in bookshops. Okay. And they would buy, if they loved a book, they would buy three copies of the book. One my father would buy, one my mother would buy, and one would be bought so that they could lend it. Now the only problem with this program, which was a beautiful program of, of uh, you know, uh, Saraswati Ki Azadi, was that they always assumed that there was a copy. So if someone came in and said, do you have, um, um, I don't know, Origin of the Species by Charles Darwin, my mother would say, of course we do. And, pick it out of the shelf and give it to them. You know, assume that then my father's copy was there, the third lending copy was around. And in that way, all three copies would go. So the, at the end of, the, of their lives, we, what we were left with of their libraries was the detritus that nobody wanted. Cardinal Newman's Apologia Pro Vita Sua, Tennyson's Longer Poem. <laughs> kind of really dire stuff. And across the city, my parents' library, I hope, has, you know, uh, educated and informed thousands and entertained thousands of people across the city because they had thousands of books and at the end of their lives there were about 30 or 40 left they just gave them all away so but my memory of happy times in this home was the silence of four people reading together So this is my room and I'm living here from 1988. It contained around 9,000 books approximately. It's covered with 500 books. So there were there are 16, 17 racks and few books are in office. Actually, I learned to read very fast because many of my neighbors were illiterate and there was a big strike, a mill worker strike. During that period, everyone wanted to know what is happening. They wanted to read edits. So I used to read edits for them. So in childhood, at the age of seven, I started reading edits first. And I learned very fast because suddenly I was important guy among kids, you know. I remember reading naturally, like many kids, Chandoba, Child, Children's Magazines, Kishore, uh, of course all in Marathi. I was in municipal school and my teacher Naik Guruji was very nice guy. Means, uh, these were kind of teachers who used to care for students. You know? So we have a box of books and I remember reading again uh, everything from Ramayana to Tom Sire. Tom Sire in translation I read um, initially and I remember that gold scene over. So like that. But reading always made me something like um, taking in different field, different word. I remember we had no electricity then and I used to read on uh, lamp. And there was a Bakasur's drawing in one book. And I always used to put my hand on that Bakasur's face and then read everything. Because I used to get scared by that. I can't forget the time, you know, when the exams are getting over. Summer and vacation meant. Rush to the library. Yes. And my favorite author was Enid Blyton. I mean, the entire lot of 
in it right and famous five what and is? secret seven i must have finished and another of course biggles was another one of them i don't know if today's children are even reading these books and uh, i remember uh, at for at one point you know i told uh, declared i want to go and stay in a uh, hostel because enid blyton had such an uh, effect on me and i think all young girls wanted because thanks to uh, malonitas and st clairs mm-hmm. correct yeah. and then everybody summer vacation we all wanted to become secret seven members <laughs> so that used to and be through fun. biggles books i we got an entire picture of the second world war without seeing a movie i mean it's as if the entire second world war came before your eyes you know through these books there are two schools of thought there are people who don't like their book dog eared and you know they they have to look brand new and they're covered in plastic and kept you know really beautifully my books really have a feel of being touched and felt and twisted and turned and marked and uh, all of that i guess i learned that from my great grandfather who was also a writer every book that he read he had little notes and i he died when i was i think 7 or 8 years old so i never really got to know him at that level uh, but and i have his books one of my favorites is a grammar of politics by harold lasky if anyone reads that anymore but you know you open the book and there are these little notes a meta text running through the books and it's like he was having a conversation and he was putting down his thoughts and i actually got to know one part of my great grandfather through the little notes he made in his books so i don't always make notes but i do mark things if there are lines that i think are particularly beautiful i just mark them i guess now particularly because i'm an aspiring writer all of that just makes sense to me but it's my way of having a relationship or conversation with the book so yes i always always have a book with me i cannot step out of the house with a bag and not have something so this is the book that i'm reading and she's great my father 50 years long back he used to sell books on the road side at that time no public was there here at uh, fountain area basically and uh, people used to appear uh, books were the only medium for any kind of information if you want to at that time now the period has changed technology has changed so this is people call this at book street but according to me this is an information sector around 9 years before supreme court ordered hawking and non hawking policy at that time many booksellers from that that road were removed at that time i was just very new uh, i used to sell books on the road side that time uh, bmc used to come they used to come with that van they used to just throw the books so i started the protest against them that these booksellers when additional commissioner khernar he was a, such a officer used to uh, break all the bill buildings and never touch the books so i asked them when uh, he is such a honest person when he is not touching books when why this corrupt uh, bmc officer are touching with books and we should be provided with a license because when you can make fashion street when you can make food street why not book street street uh, uh, many bookseller are self taught like uh, they learn slowly what sells for example wood house as a good sale agatha christ as a good sale what is pop literature what is literature what is philosophy i remember one bookseller telling me that uh, philosophy bahut mahangi hoti philosophy books are very costly and that is to even today if you buy popper's book or anyone book you will see that rutledge's book are costliest rutledge's series of philosophy books now cheaper indian versions are there 
then good bookseller is the one who knows something about book and something about buyer too for example strand used to know who would buy what and he not just personally but on large scale so he always bought uh, uh, good books sellable books in chunk for example he bought many copies of Will Durant's Story of Civilization series, which was costliest. Uh, it must be four or five thousand rupees in that twenty years ago. Even today, in second hand market, it costs fifteen to twenty thousand rupees. But he bought them in bulk and made them cheaper. That was one social work like work. Our priorities seem to have changed, and I obviously belong to. Um, an absolutely obsolete world where um, it's inconceivable not to be reading. Uh, to enter a bus or, or to go any place without some book or, a, or, a, or whatever, you know, to, in today's times, Caravan or some other magazine. So all I'm trying to say is that um, one can hardly be more irrelevant than I am. Um, but that's a subject that is best left alone. You know, things that one cannot understand, one cannot get into. But books wise, um, when I was in college also, or when I, was, when I started working, frankly, there were not too many bookshops. The um, Strand started out actually. Uh, I think in Strand, at the Strand Cinema. Now the Strand Cinema has not been around for I don't know how long. But they used to have just kind of... Uh, inside the theatre, in the lobby, uh, they used to have a stall, I think. And then they must have moved here. And the Strand uh, has a very strange place uh, in our memories, I think. Mm -hmm. Silly people to be, who belong to a much earlier generation. The shop is always can. It was it is a small shop, as you know. It had a mezzanine also, and um, most of the time, the shop is full of remainder stuff. Only in in the right in the front, and maybe in some of the shelves to the side, there might be current books. In those days, Indian books were very few. Who was writing? But even if they happen to be remainder books, there used to be some really amazing collections here. I joined here in 1966 to complete my graduation. I was a student of Elphinstone College. I never thought of leaving Mr. Shanbab and I continued here for the last 46 years. You know, that is how we have built up an institution. It is not an organization or it is not a, it is not a, a commercial institution. And we try to give the books which are not easily available anywhere else. Even if you today, if you see the books in the shop, most of them is in none of the big bookshops in, in, in Bombay or in India are having these kinds of books. To really engage uh, um, and encourage a healthy book culture, I think every city requires uh, serious bookstores. The independent varieties, of course, are dying down. But unfortunately, uh, we have other larger chain stores, uh, and I wish they wouldn't sell Barbie dolls and um, you know um, toys and uh, video games and just focused on books. The message I'm getting is that if you are a bookstore and don't sell anything else, then nobody will come to your store. So I think that is something that is very important for the intellectual and creative life of the city uh, to make it thriving. To to actually um, make it a viable, interesting city, you do need that book culture and that bookstores are primarily responsible for that. So we always knew that uh, a bookstore is not going to be any commercial comparison on renting this out to, let's say, a bank. But I think society needs to start measuring its yardsticks not just on the monetary plane. And people should do things also because they're passionate about them, not just because it's going to give them that much more. So we knew that from the start and we, if somebody asks how are you doing, we say very well. Because we think that very well is, is in many planes. 
I think people want more spaces like these, whether it's in books or whether it's in art, whether it's in culture. I think the society is, is thirsty for it. And there should be more. Uh, we just wanted to give ourselves and Mumbai a space. And uh, if you like Hindi music, there's from the movie Mausam a lovely song called Dil Dhulta Hai, Phir Wahi. So we wanted to give that fursat ke raat din here. I know people from the 1970s and the 80s uh, who regardless of the college they were in would be visiting the other college, stealing books from the library, putting them back on the shelves, uh, only because it was this sort of informal system where the access to book was more important. Um, now I don't find that happening anymore. Uh, for instance, one of the things was uh, I always do this poll in all my classes and uh, it turns out that in, back in the day, uh, some of my friends uh, had uh, two book, uh, two library cards to the British Council or the American Center uh, and practically 90% of the class had uh, membership to the college library. Nowadays less than 40% of the class has even access to the college library. They don't take membership, uh, they choose not to go in and it's always, uh, it hurts a little bit to go uh, into the lending section and pull out a book that you borrowed in 2003 and find out it has not been stamped ever since. And I mean these are some of the best collections uh, of say, even if it is science fiction of Asimov or uh, extremely funny books by Douglas Adams. It's still uh, unstamped for a long, long time. Um, also, unfortunately, I remember when I was a student um, studying my master's at Bombay University. I'm still calling this Bombay University, but uh, the libraries used to be in the Rajabhai Tower. And that, unfortunately, was a closed tax system. So we really had to ask for a book. We couldn't really go and touch and feel and smell them because they were afraid that people would walk out. So I think it's uh, it's really this is this is a basis a value base that needs to be inculcated. That books are sacred, books are important, books cannot be manhandled, books need to be respected, but they need to be made available. You know, very often what happens with libraries. I had a library in my school. Okay, it was a library that had been started by Father Praxedes Pereira. It was a great, very strong principal. And he set up the library and the great encyclopedias and classic works and everything. And I remember you have peer into the library from outside thinking, when are they going to open it? In my ninth standard, they opened it. We op they opened it for one week. Someone went in and took down a book called Atlas of the Human Body and tore out the page in which there was a nude woman. <laughs> a nude woman to show like whatever, you know, changes in to puberty and... Uh, and Father Praxis found out and closed the library again. Because some child, one boy out of 900 boys, tore a page out. And why did he tear a page out? Because of some basic, you know, sort of human urge to take masturb masturbatory material home. <laughs> you know, can, that, can that be reasonable? That's how we treat libraries. British used Council. To, yes, we used to be members of British Council, but again, since there's no need for it. Mm. It's been discontinued. When the, my when the children, children were yes, here, were going, and going they up. did a lot of reference reading, especially my younger daughter, she mm. would, she, uh, we would all get books from there. In fact, I've been a member of British Council from my school days. Mm. And even as we were growing up, even in college, you know, I was still a member of British Council because I found it so useful. Being close, so close to home, I could just go there anytime. On a weekend, we would always go there, Saturdays, it used to be one of our outings. Yes. It's not really shut down, it's relocated and it's a virtual library and they deliver books home. Um, I did feel that there is uh, this loss of ability to go and browse as you deem fit, to read the blurb of, on the back of the book. Um, and obviously now it's moved to this location which is extremely remote, so you, one doesn't even go there for the cultural events that are there. But uh, as a library, I think it now fails because I wouldn't want to uh, browse books online, order them, wait for the courier to come home, call them again, say pick up the books. Um, but yeah, in, back in the college day, it was a wonderful experience because a huge trove of books and there used to be their incoming shelf which um, uh, would have books which would release in exactly one week and then we would be there at 8 a.m. in the morning trying to get the first uh, book release. Yeah.
Bombay is full of these little circulating libraries, right? And they have sort of a dual function. You go in there and you dump books that you don't want anymore. And then you have, you know, stacks of these uh, popular books that you can go and borrow. Um, and I don't think they're given a lot of credit, actually. But uh, in a lot of these little circulating libraries, you know, which look like rugby shops from the outside, you, you can find sort of really fine collections of crime, for example. Um, of, of romance novels, which are of course a staple of what uh, women re read and write. And so I think there's, there's an argument to be made there about it being a sort of, you know, an interesting s space gender-wise as well. We don't have a public library system. We do have small circulating libraries, but the nature of these libraries has also changed over the years. Um, and uh, it would really certainly help if we had at least public libraries where you know, anybody can walk in and borrow a book and read it or whatever. So I think academic institutions and public institutions need to foster this kind of uh, uh, thinking. You see, the new generation, which are based on the computer and IT-based people, they are going see, now nobody is using landlines. Everybody is using mobiles. On mobile, you get all kind of facilities. You know, you can even, after some time, you can read a book on the mobile itself. In, if you go, if you think about all these things, in future, book selling will be very dangerous things because people may not go and buy the books, which are available because that saves a lot of space and they can read on a Kindle anywhere they want, any book they want. You know, that's why I think there will be there will be big stake in the future of bookshops, you know, in the selling books. No, Flipkart can never compete with us. Flipkart may be competitor to book, uh, bookshop, but he can uh, never compete uh, to Bookstreet because Flipkart, he is not uh, actually making business, he is making his brand because he is providing 40% discount, 30% discount. Actually, he is breaking the uh, profit ratio of the booksellers, means shop bookseller. And we basically are selling old books. If Flipkart can sell 200 books, he can give 40% discount. So 40% discount, it will come to around 175 maybe or 160. But we may be giving the same book at around 70 to 80 rupees. still see younger generations still do a lot of reading, maybe not physical books, but online. And I wonder about that, how no, much of they reading do. they do online? No, they do. See, uh, uh, I can't imagine a uh, school going student today going online to read a book. There are so many other uh, exciting things uh, on the net. You know. So, maybe the re book reading will come back after uh, newer innovations like the e-book and these iPads, you know, they becoming they become more popular, more affordable. Then perhaps the younger generation would go back to reading on new formats, not the old paper books that we know of. See, that possibility is there. The thing is, Kindle is a great for people who don't use how big spaces, you know. But uh, especially my. Uh, Generation is always comfortable with only this format. Even book format is changed because not comfortable. I can't read John of Dykes, this book in smaller points. Uh, Kindle Mugger is diff altogether different media. Maybe next generation will be comfortable with it. But how many people have internet access? How many people could afford Kindle? It's like always, you know, someday there will be car on battery. Where is the car on battery? Futuristic talk always end up as a fantasy. Yes, what happened?
बहुत लोग कस्टमर लोग बोलते हैं दुकान पे आएंगे भैया मैं तो ये बुक पढ़ता भी नहीं है मैं तो नेट पे सब बुक पढ़ लेता हूँ ये तो आ गया नेट पे ठीक है नेट पे कौन किसके पास टाइम है नेट खोल के बैठा रहेगा पढ़ने के लिए तो अभी कहीं जा रहे हैं आते भी लिए हुए कहीं खड़े हो गए तो टाइम पास कर लिए बस स्टूब के बस का वेट करो तो वहाँ भी पढ़ सकते हैं दो चार पन्ने पढ़ लिए नेट के लिए तो उतना टाइम नहीं है अभी लेकिन अभी हमको कुछ मालूम पड़ा कि नेट कोई मेरे को किसी के मुँह से सुना कि नेट बंद भी होने वाला है कि नेट में नहीं आएगा अभी कुछ दिन बाद कहेंगे सचमुच का ऐसा नहीं है थोड़ा बहुत तो कम सेलिंग बीच में हो गया था लेकिन नहीं फिर जैसे सबको मालूम पड़ेगा नेट मेरे लिए फायदा मंद सी नहीं तो बुक से खरीद के सब पढ़ लेता है You know, it's very easy to kind of make sweeping generalizations about how an entire generation is losing a, a particular value. Or, for example, with Indian classical music, we say that oh, it's dying, but nothing is really dying. Nothing really goes away. There are different genres that come up, and um, and and I think that you know, reading is a very basic compulsion, which is why it has always been around. And so, I think that. Yes, there's a lot of competition from many different media today, but um, but people will probably always read. I also think that you know. Um, there are so many different kinds of books today uh and many of them are not exactly what one would define as literary for example there's this whole what i like to call the chetan bhagat phenomenon so you know there are many sort of uh, other such writers who fall into this popular fiction category and to my mind it's just wonderful because it's expanding the universe of reading i think some of the books may be a little unreadable according to me but that's my opinion and i think that it's lovely that there's just different kinds of books out there because i almost prefer an accessible not very well written book to a really pretentious uh book that is trying to be literary but is just incoherent and those books do exist i'm i'm not sure about what need it addresses in a lot of uh, readers but it says something to us that these books are enormously popular i think this quick lit if we can call it that for now uh is something that is very attractive to a lot of first time readers and i've read the theory that uh it's writing like this which is essentially dragging away the sort of readers who might have opened their first novel in uh in hindi or or in or you know in another language uh and sort of just made their the gateway experience into literature and english one which i think has sort of very broad uh, implications but it says a lot about the reach of english right that these books are being distributed in like small towns and stuff which is why they're so popular and you know we are the lucky guys we have english i hope to god you speak and write marathi as well. i don't write marathi very well my my one of my books might have been there in marathi but you know i know my limitations but what is happening why is it that even when the parents send their children to english they do not at all infect them they infect them with the possibilities of getting a job that is what english is supposed to be. it is not the language no? and do we realize what we owe to that this there is a as you know the regional language is on one side and english on the other and there is a constant enmity between the two where is this coming from when did the regional languages ever start looking at each other this is again one of the myths created is any maharashtrian i am now exaggerating how many maharashtrians are interested in kannada literature How many Maharashtrians are interested in Gujarati? Forget Sri Lanka and forget Indonesia and Pakistan. When it comes to books, I just am a little uncomfortable um, making racial or national um, discriminations. Only because I think a book takes you into another world, and it could be for us even. a village in india is as foreign as the world of larry and daisy and george 
and Fatty and whoever else is in Secret f Famous Five. There are two kinds of experiences that, that you're immersed in when you grow up as, a, as an English-speaking child in India. One is this world of books which you inhabit where no one looks like you, everyone has names like, you know, Molly and Peggy, which none of your friends have. Um, and they're in these alien landscapes. And I feel like it's partly useful because it transports you to sort of experiences that, that you couldn't hope to have in your own city. You grew up inhabiting two very different fantasy worlds. Uh, and I feel like in on balance, that's that's a good rather than a bad thing. It's about 10 years back, it's a tend, you know, People used to read classics, latest novels and all these things. About 10-15 years back, you know, the change, it has been changed. People were started reading all the management books, then uh, all, you know, uh, self-improvements. Those type of uh, things were selling more. But again the trend has changed. People are reading more and more fiction. Especially Indian fictions are selling more than the, you know, other fictions. You know, like your name, this, uh, namesake. yeah, that is namesake or music room. All these things were sold in, you know, that uh, um, Chanakya chant, which was sold in thousands. In the past, Indian authors were, they, if they could sell about 1,000, 2,000 copies, so it was a great thing. Like uh, Ar Arvind Adiga's books. You know, thousands, millions of copies were sold all over the world. Not only in India, even abroad also. So many foreigners when it comes to India, they ask more Indian books than the foreign books. The question is, it, the only thing that really I think is germane to the subject is that do you have teachers or parents who have this ability to pass the virus on, to make it totally infectious, the excitement of a book? When I was teaching maths and mathematics and English, parents would say to me, so I went to the school and they call you sir because you know it's a, a form of respect to a teacher. So I went to the school and they say he's not very good at language, he doesn't spell well. And they say, you know, he should read. So, sir, tell him to read. I turn to the child and say, you better read. What do, what do you do? And then I, if I knew the parents well, I would say, your child will do what he sees you do. If you come home and read, he will read or she will read. If you come home and slump in front of the television, he will come home and slump in front of the television. That is all there is to it. It is about my messes. All our habits are mimetic habits. What we do, we become our parents. Remember Philip Larkin, they fuck you up your mom and dad? It, that is exactly true, right? We are them, okay? So, now, the simple thing is, if you aren't going to be reading, we aren't going to be reading. And once in a while, there'll be someone who breaks away, tears away and becomes a reader. That's all. But at the end of the day, it's just as simple as this. If you have a, a nice, big playground near you, it is likely that you are going to become more athletic than if you don't have a playground. If you have a nice, good library which is easy for you to access, then it is obvious that your chances of, being, of reading become so much better. So at the end of the day, it has to be access. It has to be about libraries. And what do we start? We build in this country, we build temples. We don't, we don't build libraries. Libraries are ultimately your goddess of learning temples. More libraries, more Saraswati temples. But we are terrified of Saraswati, no? Because there is a, a very old belief that Saraswati and Lakshmi can't live in the same house. That if learning comes in one house, the god if the goddess of learning comes in in one door, the goddess of wealth leaves in the other door. So now, and with this new consumerist con commercial culture, you want to be rich. You don't want to be learned. So, who you will drive out of the door? Saraswati, Lakshmi can say. So maybe it is a time now to make these libraries which are so uh, well known. For example, but Asiatic libraries. Physical library. books to have books which in the they, they should form. be revamped completely yes. and a made. Section should be given for made for the, each. The entire ambience of the library should be changed so that people are attracted to it. Yes. Yes. So that that is what is required. The re one reason why I would, I would love to go to British Council is because of the ambience. 
Yeah. Apart from the good collection of books it has, it's also the ambience where you can go and spend two, three hours, you know, in a relaxed way and read a book. So maybe there is a need for these libraries to also, you know, come forward go with through these the innovative things, you know, so that so that people are attracted to a library just as much they are attracted to a multiplex or a mall. As they say that, um, you know, resistances of any kind in a city can only happen if you have spaces or offer spaces where people can get together and exchange ideas and resist what they may consider to be, uh, you know, any any form of, um, you know, authoritarianism, etc., like you have on college campuses, etc. You need the space for it. And if you're not going to give the younger people that space to develop their mind, their ideas, their future, then uh, the city is going to fall apart because it is really um, built on the values that the young, uh, younger generation uh, feeds into it and, uh, and that continues on. So that's, that's something I wish we could do.